Hey, what's up guys? This is Andre Estrepa and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're talking five things to make your real estate videos even better. So let's get into the first one right now. So starting off with the first one, and that is the details matter. One of the things I always see when I see real estate videos done by other people, or especially people just now getting into it, is it's all just wide shots. Basically just wide shots of all the rooms and that's basically the whole video. And so you're probably thinking, well, what's wrong with that? How else would I film it? And it's actually just blending in some tighter shots. It makes the video so much more interesting when you're using a different focal length to show off the details because, you know, the details are really important because, you know, usually these homes are pretty high end. So the trick is obviously you're using a wide angle lens on your gimbal or whatever method you use to film these homes, but invest in a prime lens to film these details to make the video so much more interesting. I use a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter depending on what I'm feeling and uh, it's just so nice to break up those wide shots and it just gives a, the viewer a whole different perspective and lets you focus in on those details and kind of make them shine when they're usually just lost in the wide shot. And then take it a step further by not only just filming these things with a different focal length but turn them on. So show them being used. If it's a faucet, turn on the faucet so you have running water in the shot. If it's a gas stove, turn it on so you can see the flames and just, you know, more motion in the video. You can also turn on the fans in the home. Some people like this, some people don't. I think it's a good touch because sometimes when I see a lot of these wide shots of just spaces, it just looks almost like a still frame. Like it just looks like a still photo just kind of moving. So if you add motion, any motion into your videos, it's going to make it just a lot more interesting like that. So you can utilize that in your details. And then the last thing, here's a bonus tip. In editing, you can actually just make this easier on yourself by actually organizing your folders based on the rooms that you shot with your wide and your tight shots. Okay, number two, don't go in sequence of a home tour. A lot of people when they first start out, me included, is you think that you just have to do these videos, you know, chronologically in the sense of like as if you were to walk into the home front exterior, you're going in through the entryway, then whatever's there, if it's an office, a dining room, then the rooms that are there, then making your way into the kitchen, living room, then the master suite, and then so on. The problem with this is that some of the best features of this home might be the living room, might be the kitchen, might be the master bath, and you might not be able to get to show that until like halfway or three-fourths of the video. By then, half the people watching this video might not even gotten to that point. So, why don't you start off by showing those things first? So that's recently what I've started doing is basically starting off with like an aerial of the front property and then maybe just one shot of the home and then bam, jumping into the best parts of the home, which is usually like the living room or the kitchen and then kind of just showing off those first because it's probably gonna be more engaging and keep your audience watching or whoever this video is intended for. Basically thinking about it as like showing the best selling points to like the least important parts of the home. Then going into like other smaller parts like the secondary rooms, the entryway, etc. Things that maybe aren't as important, but you definitely want just those most important rooms to shine first. Moving on to number three, adding subjects to your video. A video with people in it or any type of subject is always going to be usually more interesting than a video without any. Basically, you want to have these subjects portraying the lifestyle of this property. You know, chances are if you're filming a video for this home, it's probably going to be a higher end home and you can have these subjects being that it's a realtor, the sellers if they're down or maybe just bring some of your friends and kind of show off what you do in this home. So let's say that there's a really fancy media room. Why don't you have someone with a glass of wine chilling with some popcorn actually watching a movie in there so the people interested in this home can see what it's like to view a movie in there. And also in doing this, it's basically gonna elevate the quality of your video. Just make it seem more higher end versus just, this is someone with just a camera just shooting the home going to show off more thought behind it and it's going to just be more visually interesting to the viewer. So now moving on to number four and that is turning off the lights in the home. I know you're probably thinking like what? Turning off the lights? That's going to make it worse but here's the reason behind that. This is something I recently started doing and I'm actually really liking the results. Whenever you're filming a home typically they always and always have mixed lighting. It's usually really tungsten, you know, that yellow looking orange lighting practically everywhere in the home. And then when you go and open the windows, 
you're basically gonna have blue light coming in and you're gonna be fighting that, which is the daylight, against like the orange, yellow, and it's just a really harsh contrast and never looks good. So one of the things I started doing is if these homes have really nice natural light is basically just utilizing the window light available to just showcase these rooms. And so what happens is now you're gonna have one consistent white balance across the whole scene. Your colors are gonna look better. There's not gonna be like blue and orange coming in and it's just not gonna be a mess of things in editing. And honestly, everything is gonna look a lot better. And so. Obviously, this isn't gonna work for every home. And this is only gonna work for especially homes that have really good natural light. If it's a darker home, which mine is, and if it's also a gloomy day like it is right now, that's probably not gonna work. So you will have to have the lights on. You know, why don't you take both shots? Sometimes I'll do both in case uh, they really wanted to have that on or it looks better off. So just turn off the lights for one shot, turn it on for another, and now you have both. Some of the agents that I work with are so awesome that they even go as far as replacing the lights in these homes to make them daylight balanced, which is incredible because again, now I have consistent white balance and just it looks so much nicer. And so I'm really glad that they take it a full step further by doing that. And then finally moving on to number five and that's getting the best image in camera. The more exact accurate settings you can get in camera, the more you can do perfect on the shoot, on location, the easier editing is gonna be, and honestly, the better these images are gonna come out, which is gonna make your whole video a lot better. When you're first starting out, you may not know exactly what kind of settings to use, and that's totally understandable, but now getting into it, doing a couple more of them, you know, you should be using full manual settings, using a custom white balance, like usually I start at uh, 4800 Kelvin and then just kind of go from there because usually that's a good starting point but just having full control over your image to make it show the best as possible is gonna be a lot better in the long run. Here's another thing that I do also, I film all of the interior shots at 30 frames per second and all the exterior shots in 60 frames per second along with the details. Cause I work in a 24 frames per second timeline always. And so when I film in 30 frames per second, I can slow it down to 24 which is about an 80% difference. And so now I have just a little bit slower footage to work with, especially if I have to stabilize it because I use a Ronin S on my 5D Mark IV with a 16 to 35. And sometimes it just happens where it just gets like a little bit of a jitter or something. And so in editing, I have to stabilize it. And so having just a little bit slower footage to work with is gonna usually give a better result if it's like really fast and then it's gonna look all like warpy and whatnot. And also another cool thing about shooting at 30 frames per second is your shutter only goes up by one because if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you should have your shutter at 150. If you're doing 30 frames per second, now you can have your shutter at 160. So it's not that big of a difference and it's not gonna really affect your image as far as like making it noisy or something. And now for a bonus tip. This is how I get the most dynamic image in camera when I'm shooting these homes and just I feel like takes them a step further because it almost looks like cinema quality. What I mean by that is actually shooting in HDR mode, which is something that my camera has. I shoot on a Canon 5D Mark IV, and that's one of these features I recently found in there, never used before, but it has an HDR mode. So basically when I use HDR, high dynamic range mode, is it's gonna get more details from the window and in the shadows and make it more of a dynamic image. One of the biggest pet peeves I have whenever I'm doing real estate videos or I see other people's real estate videos is when the windows look like just a white square. Like even in this scene, even my YouTube scene, look at this. You can kind of see the detail out there and it just makes it look so much more, you know, I guess like higher quality to me. Especially if this was just like a white square, it just wouldn't look as good. And so that's one of those things that really just, I wanna focus on is always making my videos a little bit better to stand out and just look higher quality. And so doing this enables me to look outside the window or at least get some detail to where it's not just like a white square. So at the end, it just always looks like a higher end video. And especially if there's something that you wanna see out the window, like maybe a pool or a nice backyard or maybe some nice you know, greenery or something back there, this is where this comes in handy. Now, if your camera doesn't have an HDR mode, what you can do is shoot in log if that's something that your camera supports. My 5D Mark IV doesn't have that, and so this is basically my workaround for that. But if you shoot in log and you know what you're doing in editing and you can grade that pretty well, that's gonna capture a lot more dynamic range for the windows and the shadows where you can have more control in editing. But if you don't have log like me, you can manipulate your color profiles to maximize the most that you can get out of them. Basically how I'm filming in this video right now. I don't have log, so basically I take the standard profile and I just drop the contrast all the way down and I drop the I drop the sharpness all the way down so I can have a lot more flexibility in post 
I mean, as much as I can. Then in editing, I can add in as much contrast, sharpness, and all of that. And so I find that that works also a lot better while I film in HDR mode to just maximize everything. Well, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts on some other real estate video tips you might have, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be a part of it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.